high point. Fire board. Fire. We don't know whether they're coming or not. I don't think they are. Okay, so. And there's I'm nobody. Yes. Nancy, Nancy. Are you ready for me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, I've been here in front of you before, and I, I really disagree with having a beer garden down at the Bergens. I think we are setting a terrible example. We don't have to, everybody, I mean, not everybody, but you know, we all drink once in a while or do something, but why do we have to do it down there when that is a community thing? 4-H is, a, it, the fair is about 4-H and kids having fun on the rides and families coming home to be at the fair. Why do we have to sit there and have a beer fun? I just, I, I think we're setting the wrong example. I'm not for it at all. I've been going around, I've been preoccupied with some other stuff lately, but I've been going around talking to people, trying to get signatures, and and honestly, there are some people, especially business people, and I understand this because we were in business, um, they're afraid to put their names down because people react, and we went through that, didn't we? Yep. You just are supposed to keep your mouth shut well. <clears throat> Um, some of them think it's okay, there's beer down there anyway, okay. I know that. But what's the, what is the liability for the county if somebody leaves there and they are drunk and there's an accident and somebody's really hurt or dies or something? What is the liability of the county? I mean, are you going to be stuck with somebody suing the county for this? I mean, can you afford that? I don't know. But I just think we're setting a really bad example. And I've done this for years. I know, and I'm sorry, but I, that's how much I believe in it. Yeah, well, it's, it's a pretty touchy situation with the people that who want it I know. versus the people who don't. Uh, my personal view is I, I talk to many people over in my area and see what they say. And if, they, if I get more to say no, then it's no. And if I get more to say yes, then... I guess it'd have to be yes, but but you know, personally, I'm not in favor of it. But well, like I, said, up. I, I don't drink very much either. I'm not mm -hmm. opposed to drink. You eat one, drinking right. at home. We got plenty of or they don't drive drunk. This whole yeah. thing, of course, they don't. Most of them don't, but they can. There's plenty of places they got a diamond R down here. We mm -hmm. got. I just I'm opposed to it too. I just don't think we need it down there. I'm with Nancy. The kids, it's the kids that sets a bad example for the our young people, and so I'll, I'll stand. I, I'll go on public record for. It. I don't. Thank I you. sign her document. I'll I'll yeah. stand publicly on it. I'm not opposed to drinking, but there's plenty of other places they can drink, and let's keep that. They got ice cream down there and funnel cakes and other stuff. They don't have to have alcohol. And that ice cream is bad for you, too. <laughs> One other thing that uh, somebody said to me, you know, they're having trouble. And I know the fair board, they said, would have to monitor that, you know, be there to keep, keep them where they need to be and other ones out and that kind of stuff. But they said, for crying out loud, we can't even get enough people to hardly run the, the Ferris wheels, and, you, know, the, the, you know, the carnival down there. How, I, you know, I don't know. I... I just don't know. Well, that that part I think would be have to be left to the sheriff because I don't think we want just regular individuals telling somebody, especially if they're drinking. Yeah, that's drinking. what I'm wondering. How, how do you do that? You know, I, I I really don't know. Probably a better question for our attorney. We're not here today, but it'd probably be a better question for her as to how it would be, you know, governed down there. My yeah. opinion, I mean. Uh, there have been a lot of beer gardens, you know, for alumni weekend, for different things, even the Morris Echo uh, rally, which there will not be a beer garden this year. We decided right. no more. But uh, my concern down there is the little kids. You get those little kids that are up to 10 years old, they're running everywhere. And what if they decide to run to mom and dad's car ahead of mom and dad like they always do? Mm -hmm. And they happened to run out in front of somebody leaving down there. Might have had one too many beers. I mean, there's just too many kids running. And what? And then when they're in between the cars and stuff, you can't see them until they're out in the, you know, out in the street or in, wherever they're at down there, you know, and stuff. So it just kind of scares me on that part. Uh, adults can take care of themselves more likely, but it's the kids running around. 
Well, I'm opposed to it, and you know that. Uh, but what I would like to figure out, one of the reasons they want a beer garden is you cannot use tax dollars for entertainment. It's against the law. All you can use that for is the maintenance of the grounds. Admission is what you have to generate your money for entertainment. I'm not saying it hasn't been abused once in a while, but that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the reason they want a beer garden. They think it will generate more income to pay for entertainment. What I'm saying, I wish we could figure another way to generate that income instead of a beer garden. I don't know how, I don't know. Well, I would think if they would start a fundraiser at the first that's, year going around. That's what I would think maybe, maybe a fundraiser type deal, I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I really think that's the reason they think they're gonna, if they have a beer garden, they're gonna have better admissions. So is that a state law? Is that a state that's for the whole state of Kansas? I'm, I'm pretty sure I was on the fair board and I know we weren't supposed to do it years ago, and I'm pretty sure it's the same. Well, we had um, friends up this weekend from a lot of different places, and I don't think Colby has a beer garden. I think Norton has a beer garden, but I don't think Colby does, but they said no way. Well, Cody's here. I can say, would you guys want to... Would you want to maintain the beer garden down Maintain? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like for the year and that kind of <laughs> the, my, 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 my statement on beer at the fairgrounds is the same as what it's been. I, I really don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. But whatever decision fair board, commissioners, everybody makes, I want everybody to be on the same team. Because in the past we've had, you know, one fair board member would tell somebody, oh, it's okay, you guys can drink behind the barn. And then another one would come to us and say, there's people drinking behind the barn. And and it, we have to be on the same team. If we're going to have a beer garden, we all, and we set rules and say, beer is allowed here but not here, we have to be on the same team when I go out and force somebody to have a beer where they're not supposed yeah. to. Yeah. Um, and vice versa. It's it's We have to work together as a team, not not against each other and that's the only thing I ask is that we whatever decision it is if the decision is not to have beer then we have to work together as a team to, to enforce it um, that's that's my opinion over it um, it's your guys' choice it's the decision you guys answer to the public you know about it just you know let's work together as a team no matter what decision you guys make Well, I do know that uh, Larry Finley and Terry do one heck of a job bringing in the group during the summer there, and uh, they go around and raise a lot of money by talking to business people and individuals to put money in the pot to bring in that band. Mm -hmm. And they do have a beer garden up there, but I don't think they would have had that concert without the support from the people that are paying the major part of the band. Right. Okay, is that, is that it? Okay, well, uh, I guess we'll talk with our sheriff now. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. How are you, Cody? Pretty good. Did you guys get an email from Leslie with the, the stuff? She'd asked for the the what needed to be done. Then sent it to her. Okay. I have a, I'll look and see. Okay. Um, I got. I brought one extra copy, but this is this is what needs to be done on the generator project and. Um, we need to figure out, and I don't think we're going to get figured out this meeting. I think we're going to have to talk to Marty and get to figure out a way to do it within the scope of the historical building. 
codes, or whatever you want to call them, laws or rules. But uh, you can go through there. This is this is a list of what the known issues are on the wiring, and then the suggested fix of those uh, of those problems. Of course, this is included in on the bid, but on the bid it has no description of what the problem is. It just says you know what his what he's going to charge for the solution. So this sheet talks about what the problem problem is. Um, to me, the biggest problem is is the wiring. We've been told since we built the dispatch in 2007 mm -hmm. that the wiring up there has been inadequate for what we're doing. And then when we added to next gen, you know, as we keep building the dispatch to the state dispatch model, you know, every time somebody comes in, they're like, "This, we can't add any more load to what you guys have." So it's it's beyond just the generator. It's other issues that we have up there. Um, and you know when we when we lose power to 911 and, and I know I'm standing on a soapbox here, you know that that's the key to everything else. If we can't have 911 calls, mm -hmm. you know what 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 can we do? Fire, EMS, everything else like that. Um, and it's not a case of if it happens; it does happen, and it happens and regularly. When, when. Um, so it it does happen quite often. And when it does, we usually have surges and when we surge, we're losing equipment, you know, um, and it's not cheap equipment yeah. either. Um, but I think we need to go through this list and maybe talk to Marty and have maybe I'll talk to him or if you guys want to talk to him, bring him in, talk to him and try to find a solution, a way to do this and stay within the codes of the historical building. Because obviously we, we have to do that. We don't want to be paying a, a fine no. on that. But I also, you know, I'm, I'm I get frustrated with historical building things sometimes because it's like, how are you supposed to update wiring? Wiring you can't run something in 2022. You think about how more how much more electrical stuff we use throughout the whole courthouse in 2022 than we did in the 1950s. The last time a wiring update was done on the building, um, so it's it's something that that needs to be done, um, but. Um, like I said, I think we need to we need to find a find a way to do it and stay within the compliance of the historical building stuff. Um, I can make more copies of these. This is what I sent Leslie. I just assumed that. Okay, I checked uh, mine and it's not it. I didn't yeah, get so, one. So. So that that basically that is something that you really need, right? Yes. I mean, there's no. I mean, yeah. it's not just a. It's it's not just the generator. The generator's been an issue for a long time. It's just not big enough to run. The biggest problem was the generator was purchased, and then the state came out with the new 911 system, which obviously uses a lot more power, a lot more equipment, and we we never updated the the generator. And I think part of that was. You know, fiscal responsibility of the generator is brand new. Yeah. Why are we updating the brand new generator? Now we're sitting, you know, 12 years later, we still need a bigger generator, and that generator is not brand new anymore. You know, when, when we first found out we needed a bigger generator for the new equipment, you know, it was brand new, and it felt ridiculous buying a new generator when it's brand new. But the generator, I think to me, is, is a small slice of the whole pie of the electrical problems that we have up there. The generator is the reserve, it's the backup, but some of these problems are just directly to circuits and wiring. Um, and kind of, they're kind of two separate projects instead of one project. Um, but like we have breakers that don't that don't work you know they're they, they, they don't break it's not that they break all the time it's that they don't break you're gonna burn something up. you're gonna burn something up um so and like i said to me that's you know it's, it's two separate issues um like i said we, the, the funding would be through the 911 money mm -hmm. and i've also offered to kick in money out of the uh drug fund 
to ensure that this happens. Um, I think the biggest thing is trying to get it to happen and stay within that compliance of the historical building. Mm -hmm. So, and probably the sooner the better because that storm has come through here. Or, yeah, it's know. it's not the winter storms that knock us down. It seems to be the the thunderstorms and the Absolutely. you know the spring and summer storms is what knocks us down. Um, when the city's doing their rolling, you know, around on the generator, <clears throat> that is extremely extremely hard on our our stuff. Yeah. Um, but. Um, but that's that the whole project as a whole is to, to build some fail safes and mm -hmm. protect. I mean, we've got we have thousands of dollars of equipment up there, mm -hmm. and we've destroyed thousands of dollars of equipment right. during brownouts before. Yeah. Um, so we've tried to do everything we can to stop that from happening. But uh, there's times when we have extended periods of time of power out, mm -hmm. and what we do is we get electrical cords out and run them all over the dispatch. Yeah to things to, to choose what we're running and what we're not running out of the system so um, when it because the 911 system is more than just a phone call you know it's the mapping mm -hmm. you know you, we're mapping somebody calls in on 911 we can map to where they are and stuff like that so there's there's a lot more equipment um, than just it's more than just a telephone right. this is what I'm trying to say so I think we'll probably Want a five minute executive session for non elected personnel? Okay. Second. second. I could be in first or second for five minutes executive personnel, non elected personnel, I mean. Okay. Five enough? I think so. Okay. The thing, too, like you say, it, not, it doesn't just affect the sheriff, but it affects the, the whole building. EMS, the fire, EMS, the fire department, everything. Uh, you know. uh, Go to executive session.